The Toronto Zoo is more than just a tourist attraction. It is an organization committed to animal research and conservation. Take for instance their work to help stabilize a species of snake that was declared extinct in the wild in the 80s. It has bounced back considerably over the last 25 years, due in no small part to education and awareness. Welcome to Animal Class. I'm here at the Toronto Zoo with Brendan, and uh, today we're meeting David Boa here, which yeah. is a really great name. Uh, what can you tell us about this type of snake? So he is what's called a hog island boa constrictor. So it kind of tells you a little bit about them. They're from the hog islands, which is a grouping of islands just off the coast of Honduras. And being a boa constrictor, they kill their prey by constriction. So they squeeze that prey. They're non-venomous, completely harmless. Um, but that is a pretty cool thing about these Unless guys. Unless they're constricting. Unless they're constricting. <laughs> and uh, this one is a, a little bit smaller than you might typically find. And why is that? Yeah, he is. So normally, if you're look, thinking of a boa constrictor, you're looking at a female getting to be between 12 and 15 feet long. Um, these guys are considered a dwarf boa species, so the females will only get to be about 7 or 8 feet long, and that's kind of the really maximum length. Um, David here is only about 4 feet. He is a young guy, he's only about 4 years old, so he's still got some growing left to do, um, but he will grow until the day he dies, actually, so all reptiles will grow right throughout their lives. Let's talk about his color, because he's uh, got a very pale pigmentation, and it kind of gets a little bit darker near the back. Yeah, so the color on most of his body, it's almost like a sand. It's very kind of nondescript. You really can't see a lot of patterning on it. There's some black spots all around him, um, but it does get much darker near the tail. Now, these guys are part of a group of boas called the red-tailed boas. Uh, it's pretty obvious where they get that name. Very mm -hmm. nice, beautiful red tail here. Um, that is just their natural coloration. You're going to see that on pretty much every red-tailed boa species you find. It gets much darker near that tail. As far as diet goes, what would he uh, what would he like to eat? Uh, so here at the zoo, he gets fed mice. Um, he gets a couple of mice uh, every other week, so only twice a month he needs to eat. Uh, out in the wild, he would eat all kinds of small rodents, uh, other small mammals, birds, sometimes even uh, lizards and other reptiles. And uh, when he's searching for food, I know snakes have the like the forked tongue. How does that exactly work? Because they use that to track their prey. Yeah, so they don't have a nose like you and I do. They can't smell through their nose. Um, but they do have that tongue. So they stick that tongue out. It picks up scents from the air. But because it's forked, they can actually tell on which side of that fork the scent was stronger. And how good is their, uh, their eyesight? Because they... Yeah. Rely on both those, right? Yeah, their vision is okay. Um, Close-up vision is pretty good. Distance vision with snakes tends to not be that great. But what these guys have that a lot of snake species do have is actually infrared organs on the tip of their snout. Oh, wow. So they can actually see the heat. And in their brain, uh, the two images overlap. So you get the vision from their eyes as well as that infrared image overlaps and they get a really detailed view of their hunting grounds and they can zero in on that prey. That is really, really cool. <laughs> um, what other... Uh features or uh, neat traits can you tell us about uh, Mr. David Boa here? <laughs> um, probably his best feature and his best trait um, is actually his mouth and how snakes are able to eat very large prey items. Mm -hmm. He can actually swallow something whole four times the size of his own head. Wow. And whenever I'm talking to kids about that because they never really kind of understand that, I always say try to swallow a watermelon. <laughs> not going to yeah. go over well with us, but these guys can swallow incredibly large prey and it allows them to not have to hunt that often. So if they get a pretty big prey item, they can go almost a month without eating. Wow. And uh, to do David Boa here a little justice, people are typically uh, maybe intimidated by snakes, but uh, as you mentioned to me, they have a pretty uh, impressive personality. Yeah, snakes do tend to get a bit of a bad reputation. You know, the media doesn't necessarily do them well. Movies, of course, mm -hmm. don't paint snakes in a good light. Um, but their personalities, as, I, as we said, are amazing. As long as you're not trying to threaten them, they're not going to try to do anything to you. We're not a food source to snakes. They're not going to go after us to hunt us, mm -hmm. um, but they are going to defend themselves if we do threaten them. So the best thing I can always say is if you see a snake out in the wild, just give them a nice, how are you, snake, and enjoy the rest of your day, because we do need to keep them around. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for introducing us to Mr. David Boa. It was Boa. my pleasure. <laughs> it's a great name. David Boa, I love it. Brendan told me he's been wanting to name a snake at the Toronto Zoo that for a long time, and he finally got the chance. <laughs> so did you get to hold David Boa and experience his constricting skills? Nope, I did pet him, but as much as I did like David, I thought I'd leave that to the professionals. Probably a good idea. 